What's up everyone? I am super pumped for this video today because this is gonna totally change your view of anxiety and it's gonna totally change the way that you think about healing from anxiety. More specifically, I'm gonna go through six mistakes that you're bound to make if you have an incomplete or an inaccurate view of anxiety. And when you see a mistake, then you know how to avoid that mistake. So my name is James Traub. For those of you who don't know me, I've got a website and a coaching program called The Anxiety Interrupt. I help parents and professionals to get rid of the anxiety and the panic in their life, reclaim their health, and get back to living their best life. So let's go ahead and dig in because we are going to talk about cause and effect and the mistakes that come out of not really understanding what's going on with anxiety. And anxiety is an effect. You may think of it as the cause of your symptoms, but anxiety is here as a result of something else. And associated with anxiety is typically worry, fear, a sense of needing to prioritize survival, being in fight flight mode, being very focused on self, which kind of goes back to survival. When you're in fight and flight mode, you are trying to survive. You are trying to get away from some sort of threat or some sort of danger. And there's also a very strong future orientation. It's very difficult to be here in the present when you're feeling anxious. Everything is about the future and what might happen in the future. So those of you that have been dealing with anxiety for several years, you're very, very familiar with all of this. And the question that gets asked all of the time is where did this anxiety come from? What's causing my anxiety? And you see posts every single day where people say, I don't know what happened. I was totally fine. And then kind of out of the blue, I started getting hit by anxiety. And this is a really confounding, a very frustrating um, question for a lot of people because feels like if we don't understand where it came from, we don't know how to treat it. So we're going to demystify some of that. There are some major, major things that typically result in anxiety. Things like having a health scare. Things like money. When you have challenges with money. Relationships. Loss or near loss. Loss could be loss of a relationship. It could be loss of a parent. It could be loss of a child. Near loss could be when someone is in a traumatic accident and you nearly lose them. But it gets you thinking about how you're going to cope and how life is going to be if that person is not around. Job stress and loss. To some degree, political. And trauma and abuse. We could kind of go on. But these are some of the common circumstances that go on in people's lives in advance of anxiety. Right? And another common one I might put here too is parenting. My wife talks all the time about how much her anxiety has increased as a result of having two young children, wondering how she'd cope if something ever happened to them. And so all of these things are inherently stressful. And this starts to lead us into some of the mistakes, right? A lot of people will say, you know, this thing happened prior to my anxiety. Therefore, this event is responsible for my anxiety. And that's not true. That's a mistake. You believe that the event caused your anxiety. And we'll, we'll explain why that's not true here in just a minute. Right, the second mistake that we make, the second incorrect belief here is that because there was so much stress associated with this particular event, that stress is maybe the problem, right? So mistake number two is that you believe 
that decreasing stress will decrease your anxiety. And then the third mistake that comes from all of this is that usually these events happen once and they don't continue to happen again and again and again, right? The challenges with a health scare might come and then go, right? The challenges at work might come or go, right? An incident of trauma for the birth of your children might come and go, right? So we might believe that time will heal your anxiety. That if I just wait long enough, this anxiety will go away. I just need some more distance from these events and then my anxiety will go away. And unfortunately, it doesn't work like that either. And if you've spent a lot of time trying to distract yourself from your anxiety, hoping that it will get better, or just going through life, learning new coping tools, stepping back from responsibilities to decrease the stress and buy yourself some time, right? You've likely seen that your anxiety is not getting better. It may be getting worse or it may be staying the same. And so kind of the big reveal here is that in the same way that these attributes that I wrote right here are all part of kind of the anxiety family. All of these events here are part of a family, right? There's been some sort of loss of feelings of safety and security. And this is really, really important. Because it means that your anxiety was not caused by the particular event. And this is a really, really big mistake that keeps people stuck with anxiety for a really, really long period of time. Is that to get rid of the anxiety, they make changes to their job. To get rid of the anxiety, they try to change how they're parenting and get more support. To get rid of their anxiety, they try to improve their wellness, right? And avoid future health scares. To avoid anxiety, they need something to change with the money situation. And look, it's logical to think that these things are connected, right? I'm not trying to shame anyone or make anyone feel guilty for making these mistakes. Like I made these, <laughs> these same mistakes, you know, when I had anxiety. And it's just now that I can look at this and have a deeper understanding of what's really going on here. But what's really going on here is that there has been a loss of safety and security and it just so happened that one of these events is what kicked that off. This is the common denominator. This is the common cause that leads to anxiety. So now let's take this one step further because many of you have had anxiety for a long time and a lot of you are also dealing with some health challenges. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about symptoms. So the symptoms are all really, well, let's start with the actual symptoms, right? So many of you have experienced panic, panic attacks. Many of you are experiencing issues with your digestion, whether that's SIBO or IBS, right? Issues with your heart, cardiovascular, Issues with cognitive function, brain fog. Issues with mood, right? Even more anxiety, some depression, other negative emotions. Might have issues with your immune system, autoimmune issues. And finally, we've also got a depressed ability to heal. And so all of these show up. These are all basically part of the family where we have dysfunction of body and mind. And these Different types of issues can show up as acute 
issues. They can also show up as chronic issues. So loss of safety and security ends up creating anxiety. Anxiety over time ends up leading to dysfunction of the body and the mind. And we end up with panic attacks. We end up with digestive issues. We end up with tachycardia and arrhythmias and high blood pressure. And we end up with cognitive issues and brain fog and poor memory, right? Slow reaction time, disorientation, difficulty focusing. We end up with mood issues. We end up with immune and autoimmune issues. A lot of people end up seeing RA, right? We could put histamine issues in here too. A lot of this constellation that so many people end up experiencing kind of together kind of has its root in this stuff. And it makes sense, right? Because we know that the vagus nerve is impacted by stress. We know that it's impacted when we end up in a sympathetic nervous or sympathetic response all of the time, which is what's happening around anxiety, right? We're getting down into fear and we're having a stress response. So really like what's coming across in all of this too is cortisol, right? One of the other stress hormones, we've got cortisol, we've got the adrenaline and the noradrenaline, right? And noradrenaline is gonna have an impact on your heart specifically, right? And cortisol has a role to play in a lot of these things too. So it leads us down here to the last three mistakes. You believe that some of these symptoms that you've been experiencing equal some sort of a disease. And that's got you really, really concerned. And the fact that you think that you might now have cancer, that you might have some sort of autoimmune issue, you might have some sort of, you know, genetic thing going on, something that's difficult or impossible to truly treat, what does it do? Circles back over here and further decreases, right? Feelings of safety and security. And so you get into this negative feedback loop. The other mistake here, number five, you believe that if you decrease your symptoms, that you're going to decrease your anxiety. And that may be true to a certain extent, right? To the extent that decreasing the symptoms of the things that are going on leads you to feel more safe and leads you to feel more secure, you're going to get some benefits from that. So if there's been a particular issue and you find a doctor that you trust, that's going to give you feelings of safety and security. If that doctor says, here's your treatment plan, and that sounds good to you, that's going to increase feelings of safety and security. If you go through the treatment and your body actually feels a bit better on the other side, that's going to improve safety and security. Those are some of the reasons separate from whatever is going on in your body that you're able to actually feel a little bit better and why your anxiety might go down a little bit. But all of this takes us into the last mistake, which is that you never restore the feelings of safety and security. And so inherent in our challenges and inherent in our mistakes lie our opportunities. And the biggest opportunity here is to understand this chain of events, to understand how the loss of safety and security through some traumatic and stressful life event has opened the door to anxiety. And anxiety can be described as not feeling safe and secure. There's some sort of a threat. There is some sort of a danger in your life. And all of these things, the worry, the fear, the fight flight response, right? The focus on survival, future orientation. Guess what? All of this stuff is natural. All of this is your body's way of getting away from a threat, but from getting away from a real threat. And unfortunately, we're not dealing with a real threat. So all of this stuff that your body is doing doesn't help you to get away from the fears that were triggered by these things. 
the fear that you may end up disabled, the fear that you might not be able to be around and to parent your kids and to give them a good life, right? The fear that you'll never get to live out your hopes and dreams, the fear that you're going to run out of money and then you don't know what to do about your health. So none of these things are necessarily helping you. And by failing to restore the feelings of safety and security, then you stay in the state for a long period of time and then your body systems start to get dysfunctional. Because again, the vagus nerve runs from your brain down to just about every major organ, to your heart, to your lungs, to your stomach, to your intestines, to your adrenal glands, to all of these things. So I trust that this has been eye-opening for you. I trust that you were able to follow the thinking here and that you can look at these mistakes and ask yourself the question, am I holding on to any of these incorrect beliefs? Because this opens the door to getting much more targeted and much more focused in terms of getting rid of anxiety. It becomes quite clear then that once we remove the fear, then we restore feelings of safety and security, and then the anxiety goes away. And when the anxiety goes away, a lot of the dysfunction of the body and the mind is going to go away. How cool is that? So if you're interested in learning more, make sure you join my Facebook group. I put out videos like this. I put out inspiration all of the time. And if you want to talk to me about how stress reduction coaching can actually walk you through all of this and how we can partner and work together to get rid of the anxiety and the panic that's been weighing you down so that we can get you back to improving your health and get you back to living the life that you want to live, reach out, send me a message on Facebook. I look forward to talking to you. Be well.